Do you have any silver and gold investment regrets? Well, I do, and I'm going to share three of them with you right now. Buy your gold and silver online from SD Bullion and get your first order at SPOT. Learn more at sdbullion.com slash new. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. I don't have many gold and silver stacking regrets and my investments have done well over the past, what, 35 years or so, but there are a few things I wish I had done differently. And I don't think I'm alone here either. One of my YouTube subscribers wrote to me a few days ago and shared his sentiments. He said, hello, Yankee. I just wish I would have started 30 years ago. <laughs> Thanks for your time, M. Do you feel that way? Tell me in the comments below and, and poke that like button while you're at it. Anyway, I do have a few investment regrets with silver and gold, and here are the three of them. First, like M in the letter, I wish I had started stacking earlier. I mean, I, I didn't stack silver hard until early 2018. Now, that might come as a surprise to some of you. But I did buy my Yankee Cannon right here, a, a, a tube of 21-ounce gold American Eagles back in 2009 during the global financial crisis, the start of the Great Recession. But silver wasn't on my stacking radar until later. I wish I had stacked more silver in the 90s, but I just wasn't into precious metals at that stage of my life. My second regret, I wish I had focused more on my 90% silver when premiums were much lower. Another subscriber of mine left a great letter for me at Tim's LCS. It says that he saw a prior video where I talked about my first purchases of constitutional silver back in the 80s when I was a kid with my father. I got a few rolls of silver dimes at a Massachusetts LCS called Del Greco's. It's not named that anymore, but it seems he also bought from that coin shop as a young child. Spot was in the single digits back then, and most of my silver dimes were bought at around $9 per $1 in face value. What a difference. Oh, and this nice guy left me a sweet little bag of silver dimes for me too. Now, I am halfway through my silver dime guardhouse box, but these 25 rosies are like the official start of the second half of the box. So thank you so much, Mike. Awesome. So what's my third regret? Well, I've had the privilege of interviewing Max Porterfield, the CEO of Kalanix Mines, three times over the past two years. Kalanix is graciously sponsoring this video, and I'm literally kicking myself over this junior mining company. Three times Max has given me great reasons to get into Kalanix, and while I've added them to my watch list, I never bit on some shares. Dumb. Year to date, Kalanix has been up over 51%, while the spot price of silver has gone down over 12%. Gold is pretty much flat, just up about 1%. By the way, Max is a physical precious metal stacker himself, and he has some great insights into gold and silver, along with base metals like copper and zinc. You're going to want to listen to this interview all the way through. Welcome back, Max. Good to see you again. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, Max. Right off the bat, what is going on with Kalanex this year? Your company is up a whopping 51% on the over-the-counter markets. What gives? Well, I mean, we've had a lot of positive news flow that's been pent up for quite some time. And it's one of the things that's been kind of holding us back, I think, per se, is a huge lag on turnaround times to get our results back from the lab. So what happened is we were allowed to, or were able to finally put out our news, the, the final bit of drilling, which is critical. And we we're in the process of having independently modeled. So, you know, the volume and the grade of the, the deposit called Rainbow. Uh, and then in addition to that, we outlined our exploration targets. We we're just gearing up for the 2023 campaign and building the momentum we had, where we actually had a brand new discovery called Alchemist, which in many ways is where Rainbow was in early 2021 with just a couple holes into it. Our team has been known for finding three of the four largest mines in this community's history that's had 32 mines. They've been credited with 15 of those. And so we also uh, added a member of our team who's quite well known in this area of the world that we are have our projects. Peter R. Jones is an engineer 
but not only is an engineer, but he's also the former CEO of HUD Bay, which is the big, um, you know, mid-tier mining company that has operations historically in Flinflon. And so again, that, that kind of culmination of, of news flow is what's led to uh, I call it a resurgence of the share price. Uh, relative to our peer groups. And I think we're going to continue to outperform as we move forward into the new year. Most of my juniors are down year to date, Max. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm still super bullish on the eventual price of gold and silver, not to mention copper, other base metals. I think the the miners are going to do very, very well. But already, Kalinex has been a star. And frankly, I have a little bit of regret that I just watched from the sidelines as your share price kept going up and up. Isn't inflation hitting you hard? I mean, with the price of diesel and other costs. Well, I think overall, yes, costs are, are uh, have risen, um, but this is no different than if you're managing a business in the 1970s. You just have to manage around that. I mean, we, we have always paid uh, fuel costs on our own. Uh, so that certainly has ticked up, uh, you know, service costs in general has ticked up. Um, but again, these are things that you just need to plan for. It's the cost of doing business. And that's the reality of life is you got to pay the pipe. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Gotta, right? <laughs> we're in the middle of a storm. We don't control the storm. We just need to navigate through the storm uh, and then come out on top. And that's all we're really looking to achieve. Another thing we've had to navigate through is the Fed, right? And I just read that economist Noriel Rubini is still calling for a trifecta of recession, a debt crisis, stagflation, all in 2023. Do you do you think he might be right? Wall Street's going to get clobbered this year. I think that anybody that owns Tesla, Apple, Amazon, any of those people have just gotten absolutely smoked by the market. Yep. And uh, so this is nothing new. And I, I really do think that we are in a recession. I think that everybody waits for an indicator to say that we're in a recession. But quite frankly. I think you just look at the layoffs uh, and look at the market overall. Uh, so I don't think he's wrong about that at, at all. Um, but you've got to pick and choose your spots. There are going to be bright spots. And certainly I think that the mining business overall is kind of going to have its uh, its comeuppance in terms of a little bit more respect than historically the sector might have received. You're right. People are, are rushing to invest in things like resources, commodities, infrastructure, energy. Why is that? Well, I think it's a multiple. I think it's, first of all, a big macro play right now, particularly in the base metal space, where you have a big shift uh, to EVs. I mean, really, if you look at Tesla and the success of Tesla and the rise of that uh, kind of vision, uh, and that's kind of spun out to other areas, that's going to have big impacts in the world because government policy is always going to drive that change. And governments have started mandating that all these vehicles need to go to electrification by 2030 or 2035. And quite frankly, that's just not viable without new mine supply coming online. And so, again, like any other business, when you have mine or demand over, also, you know, overcome supply, you know, you're stronger than supply, uh, you're going to lead to higher prices. And that's certainly going to be the case for going forward the future. I mean, if you look at base metals, for example, copper, where we have a very high grade uh, discovery, uh, you have, again, five year lows in the LME inventories, uh, again, for the above ground stockpiles. You've got declining supply. If you look at geopolitical risk associated with supply, that's a big, big point. Um, you're having mine supply coming off, obviously, and well, Russia is about 4% of copper supply. But the bread and butter for base metal supply in copper has always been Latin America, South America, Chile, and Peru, namely. And you have a lot of geopolitical unrest there. So again, it's mine supply coming off while policies mandating new demand coming online. And then you add in any kind of reopening out of China kind of adds more fuel to the fire in a very, very tight market. And what's often overlooked in the mining space is the time to production and the path production. Not only is the discovery much harder than oil and gas, but the path to getting the mineral out of the ground into a usable product is also much more extensive. Uh, so from discovery hole to production in copper, on average, you're looking seven years and you can fast track that in situations like Kalinex and our discoveries because of location and, and jurisdiction. Uh, but that is also very, very unique on its own. So again, that's really what we're playing with right now is, you know, a perfect storm in the base metal space, certainly. Gold, silver, copper, zinc, you cover a lot of these, don't you? Again, you kind of got a basket of metals uh, that, you know, is more stable than having uh, your mine supply or your production center exclusively off of one metal. Now, rainbow is 90% copper, but it is nice to have 
hmm. that gold is a byproduct certainly to offset things and uh, help pay for things because who doesn't like gold? <laughs> who doesn't, right? <laughs> I think it's time that I get in on some of these incredible returns. I don't think I'm too late. Am I, Max? I mean, no. If- I think we're very early under the discovery. I think one of the key catalysts moving forward is going to be the maiden resource. And then we're about to close a financing that we previously announced, which will then allow us to turn the drills on very, very shortly and then continue to build size and scale with the drill bit, which is, you know, the value driver for a company like Kalinex. So we're in a great position, the right commodity, the right time with a tight capital structure and a, and a team that's, you know, executed up until now. All right, guys, remember, this is a leverage play on the price of metals. Big price swings are likely, so please do your own due diligence before speculating in any junior mining company, including Kalinex. Max, how can people get in touch with you if they have more questions? Certainly, you can visit our website at kalinex.ca. That's C-A-L-L-I-N-E-X dot C-A. And uh, again, we trade on the OTC in the U.S. under the ticker C-L-L-X-F. If you have any viewers in Canada, we also trade on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the ticker CNX. Great. I had that up on the screen, but I will include all the information on Kalinix Mines in the description below. And thanks again for joining me, Max. Thanks so much for having me.